Good morning, folks. It is Friday morning, and we're doing another lifestyle episode so you can learn a little bit more about what goes into each of these morning news. We're starting at spaceweathernews.com, and for those of you who might be new here, got to come up and click What is Space Weather? That will take you to a place where you can basically become an expert better than about 99% of the people on this planet in about one hour. So let's scroll down immediately, and of course, 193 angstroms and 304 angstroms are always running, always looping back. As you can see, it just kicked back right there and restarted the last 48 hours. Uh, let's scroll down a little bit. This is where you can find the Daily Earth and Sun Report if YouTube has stopped sending it to you. If that is the case, make sure you're subscribed and you click the little notification bell next to that word, by the way. This is the six-hour and three-day uh, X-ray flux. X-rays, of course, is for the solar flares. And as you can see, we've been trending downward very much so. And then, of course, below that is the Discover Solar Wind over here on the left, a solar wind telemetry over on the right. Really not much happening there, just about as little as solar flares the last 24 hours or so. Uh, down here, this is the KP index. You can tell we're still in green. All is good, and the magnetometer is just doing its nice wavy motion. No big spikes up and down, so pretty easy going there. Uh, coming and taking a look at the, the sun, we really don't see any eruptive activity. We do see these bright regions right here. That was the surface surge you saw yesterday. Uh, but if you do want to go check out some other views, uh, you go to the SDO data link that you guys have below the video there. It has all the wavelengths you can go check out for yourself. Uh, so for example, here's 171. You can see there's actually no sunspots uh, down beneath these, by the way. It's really just surface magnetism, surface plagues. Uh, the earth facing quiet really crushed those. Uh, in 211 angstroms, we can see the corona holes there facing us today. We do still have that elevated earthquake uh, watch, even though this corona hole right there was basically cannibalized by that uh, little solar motion. We do have the other ones turning into face earth today. Uh, and coming back here, if you did want to go check out the sunspots, you come down and uh, you use these four. Uh, but you can see here, and I'll, I won't even click on it, I can just zoom in. Uh, you can see we really don't have anything whatsoever. So um, those two magnetic areas you can see right there are really just surface plagues. We're over at windy.com right now, and we're just going to show you how to analyze this one storm off the U.S. East Coast so that you can hopefully go and do this for where you are in the world. I'm actually going to slide this a little bit so we can see where it's going. Uh, right now we've got the rain and snow on, and you can see it's all wrapped up into that storm. Uh, of course, that is because low pressure, which we've got in purple here, sucks in counterclockwise in the north while high pressure pushes outward clockwise in the north. These two spins are reversed in the south, except for the fact that the lows are still sucking in. They're just doing it the other way. The highs are still pushing out. They're just doing it the other way. But what's happening here is along the convergence line, and as you get closer to the storm, you've got air that is coming and combining itself together, and they've got to equalize their temperature pressure, moisture, electric potential, all of that in a very small area. And when you have a lot of change, a lot of equalization, uh, change in a short time period over a short distance, uh, that's a lot of energy. And that's how you get the storms uh, coming up in there. Hopefully you can do this for your parts of the world. Uh, we'll actually go ahead and take a look at maybe one other storm. And I will zoom out here. Take a look at this one just astride of Europe and the UK. And we'll put the rain and snow on. Yeah, you can see that it's not quite getting over there, but again, it's that convergence line where the where the wind collides. And here's another one actually forming off of a little low. Let's zoom in on that one. Okay, so we have another one there at the, up at the northern portions of the UK. And its convergence line, as you can see, swings down. This is where the air is colliding. Hopefully you can do this for where you live as well. If you're looking for a couple of things to check out today, this video by Grossbell One is awesome. It's got John Coleman, as the title says, destroying CNN and their uh, extremes only, their Sith versus Jedi view of the climate world and how people think about it. Go ahead and give a little bit of that there. I resent you calling me a denier. That is a, a word meant to put me down. I'm a skeptic about climate change. And I want to make it darn clear, Mr. Kenny is not a scientist. I am. He's the CEO of the Weather Channel now. I was the founder of the Weather Channel, not the co-founder. And I'm glad you did, because I am addicted to the Weather Channel. I watch a lot I'm of cable news. Now. Yeah, after the nice little interruption there. Anyway, really fun little video to watch there. If you're looking for something a little bit more uh, 
scientific, uh, since we're talking about climate there, here's something a little bit more scientific. Uh, they're taking a look at the TRAPPIST-1 system, and they're determining that six of the seven planets are consistent with Earth-like composition, with the exception of TRAPPIST-1f, which has 25% mass as water, which of course is much more than Earth, making both F and E uh, water worlds. Um, but they're also saying uh, that TRAPPIST-1e may be the best candidate for future studies uh, because of its semi-Earth-like composition, the fact that it probably has water. Uh, if indeed all except F are just like that, then that means there is probably subsurface oceans on H, which of course is the planet that is most likely to have the shielding from the massive stellar flares from uh, their local sun. You know, John Coleman even showed up at OTF 2017. was one of the best conversationalists I've ever met. We hope to see you all out at 2018 in the new Valley of the Sun, President's Day weekend in Albuquerque. Head over to observatoryproject.com. Remember that the first person to correctly predict a magnitude 7 or higher earthquake at quakewatch.net gets $400 and a ticket to the upcoming conference. And how do we do these morning news for free each day? Support from your suspiciousobservers.org memberships. In six days, one lucky member will win two tickets, hotel, and some travel help. We greatly appreciate your support. I hope the wind map and space weather portions were informative today. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.